This is Are We Watching the Internet Die by Edward, Edward Zitron. Edward Zitron. All right. So this is from a couple months ago, it looks like. Um, so let's let's jump on into it. Uh, sometime this month, Reddit will go public at a valuation of $6.5 billion. Select Redditors were offered the chance to buy stock in the initial listing price, which it hasn't announced yet, but is expected to be in the range of $31 to $34 per share. Wait, wait, 2024. I thought Reddit already did the their IPO thing. Reddit IPO. I thought this was... Was this just announced before and not not it didn't go through priced its ipo on wednesday this is on march 20th okay 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 we will we will take a look at that in a second i wouldn't be surprised if reddit share shares fall quickly below the ipo price based on the fact that reddit's an absolute dog of a company losing 90.8 million dollars on $804 million of revenue uh, in 2023 and never having turned a profit. Reddit's S1, the initial registration form for taking the company public, laughably claims that, that advertising on the site is rapidly evolving. That's not that's not a good term. Like you should you should use things like growth and like forward progress and and upward trend, not rapidly evolving. That doesn't strike confidence into the hearts and minds of investors. Um, so that's, that's pretty funny. Um, and it is still in the early phases of growing this business. Um, it launched 15 years ago. That's a 15 year old business. That's still in the early phases. I mean, you should have probably figured out how to be profitable by then, but okay. Um, the Reddit IPO is one of the biggest swindles in the corporate history, where millions of unpaid contributors made billions of posts so that CEO Steve Huffman could make $193 bill or million in 2023 while laying off 90 people and effectively pushing third-party apps off the platform. That was insane. I, I, that was such a slimy move. It was, it was crazy. Amazon took like 12 years to get anywhere. I mean, I guess, I guess you've got a point. I mean, some, some companies do take quite some time to, to, to turn a profit. Google took a long time too, I think actually, I guess. So, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that isn't as unusual, but, um, uh, hello, hello, by the way. Um, but yeah, pushing third party apps off the platform by charging exorbitant rates for API access, which in turn prompted several prolonged strikes by users. While some of the most popular subreddits going silent for a short period of time, Reddit in turn effectively coupled these, oh, cooped these subreddits, replacing their longstanding moderators with ones of its own choosing. You don't actually own the platform. <laughs> this is a company. <laughs> yeah, you don't actually own your data or your platform. Oh, let's not go there yet. Um, maybe we'll go there later, but not yet. Um, people who would happily tow the party line and reopen them to the public. Yep. Uh, no, I don't want to join the newsletter right now. Um, none of the people that spent hours of their lives lovingly contributing to subreddits or performing the vital but thankless role of moderation will make a profit off of Reddit's public listing. But Sam Altman will make hundreds of millions of dollars for his $50 million investment from 2014. I did not realize he was invested in Reddit. Ooh, that, ooh, that's interesting. Um, Reddit also announced that it had cut a $60 million deal to allow Google to train its models on Reddit's posts. Once again, offering users nothing in return for their hard work. Yep. If you're not paying for the product, you're the product. Sorry. Um... Huffman's letter to the investors waxes poetic about Redditors keeping a deep sense of ownership over com communities they create and justifies taking the company public by claiming he wants this sense of ownership to be reflected in real ownership as he offers them a chance to buy 
non-voting stock in a company that they helped enrich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Huffman ends his letter by saying that Reddit is one of the Internet's largest corpuses of authentic and constantly updated human-generated experience. That's a mouthful. Um, yeah, okay. Um, the quality is, is definitely something that you... you I, I, I mean, I guess this doesn't speak to this. It's just authentic and constantly updated. It's not... Okay. Um, before referring to the company's data advantage and intellectual property, re describing Reddit's posts as data that constantly grows and regenerates as users can serve. We're at the end of a vast multifaceted con of internet users where it ultra rich technologists trick their customers into building their companies for free. I don't think that this is necessarily well, okay, they, they trick their customers. Yeah, okay. I, I was reading this as they trick the VCs, but um, I think the VCs know what's going on. I don't think people understand necessarily that if they provide all this data for free and all this curation for free, that that will necessarily transfer into them getting ownership of that thing long term that doesn't happen um if you're not paying for the data if you're not paying for it it's not yours um so and sometimes even if you do pay for it it's not yours but in this case it's really not um and while the trade once seemed fair it's become apparent that these executives see the users not as willing participants in some sort of fair exchange but as veins of data to be exposed exploitively mined as many times as possible, given nothing in return other than access to a platform that may or may not work properly. Yeah, if you're going to go to an IPO, you probably should have your your tech stack figured out at that point. Um, so, yeah. But but there is, there's this, this shift in the markets right now that's causing this to, causing things to change a bit. And things are getting tighter, and then management's putting more and more pressure on the rest of the business to, to generate revenue. And all of a sudden, it it is about actually building revenue. And that's, that's different than it's been for a long time. I mean, it's been this way for probably about a year now. But um, we've, uh, we've seen this change in the industry, and th I think this is just another one of the manifestations. And... And taking taking a bit of a different turn here, I guess they should make money. Like you, they should actually be able to be a viable business. Like I think the company should be able to sustain themselves. And if that means charging a subscription for their service or something like that, that's fair. But and, and if it means ads in the site, that's fair too. But taking something that was essentially free and then starting to charge more money for that same thing sucks every single time that sucks basically so when all of a sudden yeah, your subscription's going up sorry or you know your 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 billing rates are going up like your water bill's going up your power bill's going up like yeah that that always sucks it's always good to see companies who stick to their price that they originally quoted you for. And that's not always viable. That's not always something they can do. But but the ones who do end up looking a lot better in the long run. So um, this is, of course, the crux of Cor Corey Doctorow um, in crapification theory. <laughs> where Reddit has moved from pleasing users to pleasing its business customers to now pleasing shareholders at what will inevitably be the cost of the platform's quality. Yet what's happening to the web is far more sinister than simple greed, but the destruction of user-generated internet, where executives think they've found a way to replace human beings making cool things with generative monstrosities trained on datasets controlled and monetized, by trillion dollar firms 
Their ideal situation isn't one where you visit distinct websites with content created by human beings, but a return to the dark ages of the internet, where most traffic ran through a series of heavily curated portals operated by a few select companies with results generated based on data sets that are increasingly poisoned by generative content build, built to fill spaces rather than be consumed by a consumer. These algorithms are easily tricked, and the tools used to trick them are becoming easier to use at scale, and it's slowly killing the internet. I think this is a real problem, once what we've gotten to down here. These more impersonal like the need to keep feeding these algorithms the need to keep pushing that bar further and further i think incentivizes some bad behavior as far as like you must always put content out you must do it on a schedule in order to get your views in order to get impressions or what have you um like youtube really really likes regular uploads like that's a huge thing um i think the twitter algorithm bases your impressions off your previous posts impressions so i think that's a that's a big deal um so yeah i think i think there's some incentives here that are not necessarily aligned with creating good content it's more about creating like super engaging but not necessarily very deep content. So, um, yeah, I think it is slowly devolving the situation a little bit. But degenerative AI. After the world's governments began their above-ground nuclear weapons tests in the mid-1940s, radioactive particles made their way into the atmosphere, permanently tainting all modern steel production, making it challenging or impossible to build certain machines, such as those that measure radioactivity. As a result, we have a limited supply of something called low background steel, pre-war metal that oftentimes has to be harvested from ships sunk before the first detonation of nuclear weapons, including those dating back to the Roman Empire. Wow, okay, that's interesting. Um, generative AI models are trained by using massive amounts of text scraped from the internet, meaning that the consumer adoption of generative AI has brought a degree of radioactivity to its own data set. I've heard this. It's when the AI eats its own generative works. When it's trained the next time, there's a concern that that will cause things to fall apart in the future. So that is an interesting, interesting problem. Um, as more internet content is created, either partially or entirely through generative AI, the models themselves will find themselves increasingly inbred, training themselves on content written by their own models, which are, on some level, permanently locked in 2023, before the advent of a tool that is specifically intended to replace content created by human beings. Yeah, I think content from before 2023 is going to get very, very valuable. Before chat GPT, like that... That content will be valuable, but how will you know that it's truly generated beforehand? How do you, how can you trust that? Like I can go into my blog and put whatever data I want on an article if I want it to be consumed by the AI. Like there's no reason for me to tell the truth on that. If I want my content to be part of all the search engines and all the, the AIs, then why wouldn't I set that? But uh, anyway, um, so this phenomenon that J Jathan Shadowski calls Hasberg AI, or where a system that is so heavily trained on the outputs of other generative AIs that it becomes an inbred mutant, likely with exaggerated grotesque features, in reality, a Hasberg AI will be uh, one that is increasingly more generic and empty normalizing into a slop of anodyne business speak as its models are trained on increasingly identical content. I, I agree. I think that weird things will surface to the top as things that, that the AI focuses on that it says. I think that we'll see some very interesting behavior 
come out of these things. And I think maybe we'll see the next generations of these things be more incremental. Although that probably was going to happen whether or not this is a problem or not. Like the next steps are going to be smaller and smaller. Like we went from nothing to having chat GPT and that, I mean, at least from the public's perspective and the general mass adoption perspective. And that created a huge, huge jump. And then now we're on this this other curve going higher and higher and higher, but at a slower and slower rate. We're asymptotically, we're, we're coming up to a, a local maximum here. And before the next revolution hits, like we're going to, we're going to be on, on that curve up until we hit something new. And then start to go back up again, I think. That's my prediction anyway. Um, LinkedIn already a repository of empty-headed corpo nonsense. <laughs> yeah, that's LinkedIn. Uh, already lets users write generate uh, generative messages, profiles, and job descriptions using AI. Why not? Why not? Um... And anything you create using these generative features is immediately fed back into Azure's OpenAI models owned by its parent company, company Microsoft. Probably. Yeah. Yep. Because they, they need all the data they can get, quite honestly. Um, they're, they're lacking good data. So, yep. While LinkedIn is yet to introduce fully automated replies, Chrome extensions already exist to flood the platform with generic responses. Yep, and people are using them. Like they're they're pretty common around the internet already. Feeding more genet genericism into the mouth of Microsoft and OpenAI's models. Generative AI also naturally aligns with toxic incentives created by the largest platforms. Google's algorithmic catering to the search engine optimization industry naturally benefits those who can spin up large amounts of relevant content rather than content created by humans. While Google has claimed that their upcoming core update will help promote content for people not ranked in search engines, it's made this promise before, and I severely doubt anything meaningful. Okay, there was this there was this leak lately, and I think I actually have it in the reading list. Um, so we may, we may come back to that, but I think they lied here. <laughs> pretty bad they leaked some internal documentation that showed that they 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 prioritized certain things that they said they weren't going to so should be interesting after all google makes up more than 85 percent of all search traffic and pays apple billions a year to make google search the default on apple devices and they also pay firefox quite a bit too to do the same um, and because these platforms were built to reward scale and volume far more than, far more often than quality, AI naturally rewards those who can find the spammiest ways to manipulate the algorithm. Not only AI, but so does Twitter. <laughs> the spammier you can make your content, the the more impressions you'll make. It's just how it works. Clickbait works. Um. 404 Media reports that spammers are making thousands of dollars from TikTok creator programs by making faceless reels where AI-generated voices talk over spliced-together videos ripped from YouTube, and a cottage industry of automation gurus are, cla are cashing in on helping others flood Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, and probably YouTube Shorts, with low-effort videos that are irresistible to the algorithms. Yep, it's that regular schedule. And if you generate content, you'll you'll hit that regular schedule pretty easily. Um, Amazon's Kindle ebook platform has been flooded with AI generated content that briefly dominated the bestsellers lists, forcing Amazon to limit authors to publishing three books a day. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> Just dumping books, AI generated books onto the market. I should do that. <laughs> Sometimes I read this stuff and it's like, I should do that. That that's a good idea <laughs> for a little while. 
Um, this hasn't stopped spammers from publishing awkward rewrites and summaries of other people's books. Oh no. Spark notes. <laughs> it's a derivative work. So I guess it counts. Um, and because Amazon's policies don't outright ban AI generated content, ChatGPT has become an inoperable cancer on the body of the publishing industry. Writing as a whole has now changed. Um, learning how to write even has now changed significantly. So in schools and things. It's interesting. It's certainly interesting. Uh, handmade goods store Etsy has its own AI problem. <laughs> There's some irony there. With The Atlantic reporting last year that the platform is now pumped full of AI-generated art, t-shirts, and mugs that in turn use ChatGPT to optimize listings to rank highly in Google search. Nice. Nice. As a profitable public company, Etsy has little incentive to change things, even if the artisanal products on the platform are being crowded out by generative art pasted on dropship shirts. eBay, on the other hand, is leaning into the spam, offering tools to generate entire listings based on single images using generative AI. That's that's good. That's good. Nothing like a perfectly accurate, non-hallucinated at all, super selly eBay listing <laughs> generated by ChatGPT. That sounds perfect. That's exactly what I want. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reported last year that magazines are now inundated with AI-generated pitches for articles, and renowned sci-fi publisher Clark Swir Clark Clark Swallard? Clark's World, um, was forced to close submissions after receiving an overwhelming amount of AI-generated stories. Help a reporter out used to be a way for journalists to find potential sources and quotes, except requests are now met with a deluge of AI-generated spam. This should make things... So, it, if you can still sort through all of that and read through all of that, which is... Th that's a huge if. Um, that really... That really would mean that those real articles gener generated, <laughs> written by real people, will probably stand out a lot more than than the other AI generated articles. Um, so I don't know. Maybe there's some some way to to filter those out, but uh, it's an arms race. If you've got like an if you've got like an AI for detecting AI generated content, it's an arms race to figure out if that content was or was not generated by AI. And it also will have false positives. So detecting any of that automatically isn't probably really viable at all. So uh, the Wall Street Journal reported last year that magazines, oh, we, we read that. Uh, these stories are, of course, all manifestations of a singular problem. The generative artificial intelligence is poisoned for internet dependent on algorithms. There are simply too many users, too many websites, and too many content providers to manually organize and curate the content of the internet, making algorithms necessary for platforms to provide a service. There's a lot of garbage out there, and something's got to sort through all of it. Basically. That's why. That's one of the reasons that Mastodon doesn't really work in my opinion i i don't think it really works um i post on there and i look on there a lot but there's not you the only curation you get is based on what the people you follow and you don't you can't get the good posts out of the you can't find the needle in the haystack there you need to find high quality posters in order to follow them but you'll always have a hard time finding that good post from that one person who normally posts garbage. And that does happen. I mean, every once in a while, someone's got a really good post. But how do you filter that out when you just open it up and say all, all things can go onto the feed? It's, it's difficult. So you, you do need something there to sort through things. You don't have the time to go through all of this stuff yourself. Um, but the flip side is that 
a lot of things can be missed. A lot of important things can be missed with algorithms. So I don't know what the answer is there. Um, but that's the, that's the dichotomy. And, and I think there's a really good reason why the curated algorithm is working right now. I think it's because people, people want their, their content filtered to, to some degree. It's just, they have no control over that filtering essentially. And if they did have control over it, I think maybe, maybe that's the middle path is letting you tweak your own algorithm. That, that might be, that might be interesting. That might be actually kind of good, but, um, so things get worse when you realize the sheer volume of internet content makes algorithmic recommendations a necessity to shit, to sift through an ever growing pile of crap. I think I just said that. Uh, generative AI allows creators to weaponize the algorithm's weakness to monetize and popularize low effort crap. And ultimately, what is a platform to do? Ban anything that uses AI generated content? No way. That's generating ad revenue right now. Adjust the algorithm to penalize videos without people's faces? No, those pay this, those videos pay the same. Um, how does the platform judge the difference between a popular video and a video that the platform made popular? Th that, that is a good, I, I want to save that somehow. <laughs> I, I want to, I want to save that for later. We're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to tweak that for later. Um, and if these videos are made by humans and enjoyed by humans, why should it stop them? Yep. Yep. Google might pretend it cares about the quality of search results, but nothing about Google's search decade long decline has suggested it's actually going to do anything. Google's spam policies have claimed for years that scraped content, outright ripping content from another website, was grounds for removal from Google, but even then, the, the most cursory glance at any new search shows how often sites thinly rewrite or outright steal others' content. I don't think it I don't think they, they outright steal, um, especially in mainstream media. A lot of that is syndicated. So Associated Press will will actually put out an article for bid, and then all the other media organizations can come in and bid to post that article on their site. So the person who wrote the article probably didn't even work for your CNNs or your Fox News or your MSNBCs. They probably never even worked for them because it's all syndicated through like Associated Press. So most of those journalists are probably just contract writers and they're just making it a, um, a premium based on if their content gets pushed or not. And so it's up to those those news organizations to curate. So I think what's happening is a lot of them will publish good articles that both of them find. So um, I think that's a different problem per se anyways. Um, and I can't express enough how bad yet inevitable the existence of a $40 billion search engine optimization industry is. And how much of a boon being able to semi-automate the creation of optimization of content to the standards of an algorithm that Google has ex explained in exhaustive detail. While it's plausible that Google might genuinely try to fight the influx of SEO-generated articles, one has to wonder why it bothered to try now after spending decades catering to the industry. Especially if you're probably the best game in town. Like, none of the other search engines do as good of a job in my opinion as google like they really don't surface anything like google does i find the things i want faster with google searching and maybe that's because i'm used to it and i'm able to use it to my advantage really easily and i'm just familiar with it but i am able to get it what I, i'm able to get it to give me what i want easier so that's that's why I still use it. Um, as we speak, the battle for the plat um, the battle that platforms are fighting is against generative spam, a cartoonish and obvious threat, outright nonsense, meaningless chum, 
that can and should and likely will be stopped. In the process, they're failing to see that this isn't a war against spam, but a war against crap. And the overall, what's the difference? And the overall normalization of intellectual numbing that comes when content is created to please algorithms and provide a minimally, minimum viable product for consumers. Google's useless results problem isn't one born out of content that has no meaning, but of content that only sort of helps. That's the right results, but doesn't actually provide any real thought behind it. Like the endless how to fix error code X results full of well-meaning and plausibly helpful content that doesn't really help at all. Uh, Stack Overflow, anybody? <laughs> the same goes for Etsy and Amazon. While Etsy spam is an existential threat to actual artisans building something in, with their hands, it's not actual spam. It's cheaply made crap that nevertheless fulfills a need and sort of fits Etsy's remit. Interesting perspective. The question is, does it fit enough? And that is what the market will decide. If it fits enough, then the cheaply made crap will continue to, to work. If it doesn't fit enough and people don't like it, then it won't stick around and they will remove it one way or another. Amazon doesn't have any incentive to get rid of low quality books that sell for the same reason that it doesn't get rid of its other low quality items. People aren't looking for the best. They're looking to fulfill a need, even if the need is fulfilled with poorly constructed crap. This is why furniture sucks. This is why you can't buy decent furniture online. <laughs> because they, they need to make it fulfill the need at the l and make it the lightest they possibly can to make the most profit because they want to save the most money on shipping. So that shoe rack you bought, it's just going to crumple as soon as you put anything heavy on it because it wasn't made to do that it was made to fulfill a need for a short term period of time i th it's the same it's the same thing so it, like i said it really will the market will bear it's what the market will bear if people want cheap crap then cheap crap is what you're going to get and AI is a great way to make a lot of cheap crap. So if people want it, you're going to get it. If they don't want it, maybe something better will come along. So if you want high quality stuff, that's what you should buy. That's pretty simple. Platforms likely complete positioning with popularity failing to see self-fulfilling prophecy of an algorithm making stuff popular because of stuff because said stuff is built to please the algorithm creating more demand for content to please the algorithm viral content is no longer a result of lots of people deciding that they find something interesting it's a condition created by algorithms manipulated by forces that are getting stronger and more nuanced thanks to generative ai uh I disagree. I think viral content still has a human element of they find this interesting. Like viral content is generally something we find interesting. I don't think the platforms push popular content that people won't find interesting. Will they push something that people will find interesting that they ultimately end up being not satisfied with? Probably, potentially, but it's the job of the platforms to figure out those things that aren't satisfying for users and eliminate them. So, again, it's what the market will bear. Um, it's a condition created by algorithms manipulated by forces that are getting stronger and more nuanced thanks to generative AI. I think we just read that. We're watching the joint hyperscaling and hypernormalization of the internet where all popular content begins to look the same to appeal to algorithms run by companies obsessed with growth. Quality control and AI models only exist to stop people from nakedly exploiting the network through unquestionably in, in not iniquitous intent rather than people making shitty stuff that kind of sucks but gets popular because the algorithm says so. 
No, it's because people kind of like dumb stuff sometimes, I think. I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. This isn't a situation where these automated tools are giving life to new forms of art or interesting new concepts, but regurgitations of an increasingly less unique internet because these models are trained on data drawn from the internet. Like a plant turning to capture sunlight, parts of the internet have already twisted towards satisfaction of algorithms, and others become dependent on generative AI, like Quora, which now promotes ChatGPT generated answers at the top of results. Oh, just ask Google how that one went, Cora. So will the web become more dependent and dictated by automated systems? The ultimate problem is that this, this morass of uselessness will lead companies... I, I've never heard that word before. Um, will lead companies like Google to force their generative AIs to fix the problem by generating answers to sift through the crap. Amazon now summarizes reviews using generative AI, legitimizing the thousands of fake and paid for reviews on the platform and presenting them as verified and trusted information from Amazon itself. Yeah, the summary is nice and I use it way too much, but it never vetted any of that stuff that it's using to generate the answer. Oh, yeah. Google has already been experimenting with search engine or er, search generative experience that failed miserably that summarizes entire articles on iOS and Chrome. And Microsoft Bing search has already integrated summaries from Copilot, um, who's basing their answers off of the combination of search and training data. Yet in doing so, these platforms gain a dangerous hold on the world's information. Google, yeah, basically the, the content creators get no credit for, for what they're doing. They get no credit and they get no ad revenue from, from the site. That's a problem. That's a real problem. Uh, Google's deal with Reddit also gave it a real-time access to Reddit's content, allowing it to show Reddit posts natively in search and direct access Reddit posts for training purposes. Um, yet at some point, these portals will generate an Answers based off of data they have or have access to, in the case of Tumblr and WordPress, rather than linking you to a place where you can find an answer by reading something created by another person. There could be a future where the majority of web's users experience the web through a series of portals like Arc Search Browser's Browse For Me feature, which visits websites for you and summarizes their information using AI. And that tool like that is probably a big time saver. Yeesh. And that won't generate any ad revenue <laughs> for you. That's a problem. That's a problem. Right now, the internet is controlled by a few distinct platforms, each one intent on interrupting exploratory and creative forces that made the web great. I believe that their goal is to intrude on our ability to browse the internet, to further obfuscate the source of information while paying the platforms for content that their user make for free. The eventual goal in my mind is to remove as much interaction with the, large, the larger internet as possible, summarizing and regurgitating as much as possible so that they can control and monetize results as much as possible. On some level, I fear that the current platforms intend to use AI to become something akin to the internet service provider offering clean access to the web that has become messy and unreliable as a direct result of the other platform's actions, eventually finding a way to monetize your information's prominence in their portals, models, and chatbots. As that happens, it will begin to rot out at the rest of the internet, depriving the media uh, entities and social networks of traffic as executives like Steve Hutman further cut deals to monetize free labor with platforms that will do everything they can to centralize internet traffic on two or three websites. Where's Steve Huffman? Okay. As the internet becomes dominated by these centralized platforms and the sites they trawl for content, so begins the vicious cycle of Hasberg AI. OpenAI's chief, or er, chat GPT and Anthropics Claude are dependent on a constant flow of training data to improve their models to the point that it's effectively impossible for them to author it without violating copyright. I've had this thought. It's like there is in almost every model out there, there's copyrighted content. If we are saying that the, that the content that's generated is derivative work, 
then that's probably okay and fair use. But if we're not, if we're saying that things, when the model can create things that are too close and then it should not have been trained on copyrighted data, then, then we can't have AI, essentially. There's not enough public domain data to train these things, I don't think. So, as a result, they can't be too picky when it comes to information they choose, meaning that they're more than likely going to depend on openly available content from the internet, which, as I've suggested earlier, will become increasingly normalized by the demands of the algorithms and the ease of automating their generic content that satisfies them. I'm not saying user-generated content will disappear, but that human beings cannot create content at the scale the, the automation can, and when a large chunk of the internet content for robots, that is the content that will inform tomorrow's models. The only thing that can truly make them better is more stuff, more organic stuff. But when the majority of stuff being created isn't good or interesting or even written for a human being, ChatGPT or Claude's models will learn the rotten habits of rotten content. This is why so many models' responses sound so similar. They're heavily dependent on the stuff they're fed for their outputs. And a lot of models are now trained on ChatGPT. Like, it is cheaper to train the model, other models, on the output from ChatGPT. So you'll continually get a model that's closer and closer to ChatGPT or Claude. So that's really interesting too. Um, this is why so many models responses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. intelligence comes from the same training data. Um, a different flavor of the same problem. These models don't really know anything. I've been saying this for a long time. There is no actual reasoning they're copying other people's homework. They're just merging together other data. That's why they're so good at summarizing. It's because they're good at predicting the next word. They're not good at actually reasoning about anything complex. Um, as a side, I also fear the software code that's created by generated AI products like GitHub Copilot. Uh, a study by security firm Sneak found that GitHub Copilot and other AI-powered coding platforms which were trained on publicly available code, can replicate existing security issues, proliferating problems rather than fixing them. They're great at copying. They're function approximators. All they do is they, they, they approximate what looks right. They don't actually strive to be right. Um, there are also the hard limits that you're going to see with generative images and video. While the internet is a giant hole of content you can easily and cheaply consume for training, visual media requires a great deal of significantly more complex data, and that's on top of the significant and obvious copyright issues. Uh, ChatGPT's Dolly images and Sora video products are, as I've noted, limited by the availability of ways to teach them, as well as the limits of generative AI itself, meaning that video may continue to dominate the internet as text-based content finds itself crowded out by AI-generated content. This may be why Sam Altman is trying to claim that giant AI models are not the future, because there may not be enough fuel to grow them much further. After all, Altman claims that any one data source doesn't move the needle for open AI. They're out of data. They've consumed all they can consume. They've tuned all they can tune. It will be a while before they figure out a new architecture that makes this thing work. And the only thing that the Transformer architecture did, as far as my understanding, was allow them to parallelize it. That was the key feature to allow them to cheaply train bigger and bigger models. That isn't a thing that can be replicated again. You can't parallelize something that's already parallelized. So you need some other fundamental shift in the learning that goes on in order to do the next great leap forward in AI. I think we're going to have a bit of an AI winter again for a long time. I think we're, we're at another local maxima and we're going to need to see something bigger come before we hit that next big jump. I think that's just how it's going to be. 
and the last few AI winters were long, like 20 years long. So just take that for what it is. Things may not change a lot for a while. Um, there also no way. There's also no way to escape the fact that these hungry robots require legal plagiarism, and any number of copyright assaults could massively slow their progress. It's incredibly difficult to make a model forget information, meaning that there may at some point be steps back in the development of models if data sets have been reverted to previous versions with copyrighted materials removed. The numerous lawsuits against OpenAI could break the back of the company. And while Altman and other AI fantasists uh, may pretend that these models are an interactable part of the future of society, any force that controls or makes them pay for the data they use will kneecap the company and force them to come up with a way to make these models ethically. Yeah, there's a big investment risk there. I think as from a financial perspective... There's a lot of risk there. Yet the world I fear is no one where these people are allowed to run rampant, turning unique content into food for an ugly inbred monster of an internet. One that turns everybody's information sources into semi-personalized versions of the same content. These people have names. Sam Waldman of OpenAI, Sundar Pichai of Google, and Mark Zuckerberg of Meta, which has its own model called Llama. Dario Amodi of Anthropic and Satya Nadella from Microsoft. And they are responsible for trying to standardize the internet and turn it into a series of toll roads that all lead to the same place. And they will gladly misinform the and disadvantage billions of people to do so. Their future is one that is less colorful, less exciting, one that caters to the entitled and suppresses the creative. Those who rely on generative AI to create are not creators any more than a person that commissions a portrait is an artist. Altman and his ilk believe they're the new Leonardo da Vinci's, but they're little more than petty kings and rent seekers trying to steal the word, world's magic. Based. That can, however, be fought. Don't buy their lies. Generative AI might be steeped in the language of high fantasy, but it's a tool. One that they will not admit is a terrifyingly flawed and unprofitable way to feed the growth of at all costs tech engine. Question everything they say. Don't accept that AI might one day be great. Demand that it is today and reject anything less than perfection from men that make billions of dollars shipping you half finished crap. Reject their marketing speak and empty fantasizing and interrogate the tools put in front of you. And be a thorn in their side when they try to tell you that mediocrity is the future. You are not stupid. You are not missing anything. These tools are not magic. They're fantastical versions of autocomplete that can't help but make the same mistakes it's learned from petabytes of information it's stolen from others. All right. I I think that was a pretty good article. Um, that's a good one. Edward Zitron. I think... Overall, I think I agree. I think I'm very concerned. I think I am quite concerned with the, the future of writing and written word in general. I think that I think that that this could be a huge problem. But I also think that the market is a great filter at getting rid of lots of crap on the market. It hits the market, it sits on the market, it convolutes product catalogs, essentially. Um, but it doesn't necessarily stay there for long because it doesn't sell. And when it doesn't sell, it sits on a shelf, essentially, a proverbial shelf in a product catalog at, like, Amazon. And if it's not selling, they want to get rid of it. It's taking up space that could be putting things on into consumers hands and the more that people buy this stuff the more they're going to show it if people don't buy it then i think we'll will be okay i think we'll actually do pretty well um but i think there's going to have to be some moderation of some of this stuff to to actually 
to actually be able to create good experiences for customers again. I think it's going to take some time. And I think part of that filter is you, the consumer, voting with your wallet. I think you, should, you are still in control, ultimately. You're in control with your investment money. You're in control with what you actually buy and what you don't buy. So don't buy things that don't work. Don't buy things that don't create any value for you. Um, throw the junk food out. So, all right. If you disagree with me, if you think that this article is completely off base, let me know in the comments section below. Like and subscribe for more reads like this one, more commentaries like this one. We record them normally on around 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch over there. So thank you and have a good one.